now available in paperback. Those who refuse the gift of eternal life are condemned to wander in the darkness of eternal night. Get your copy of Eternal Night at online booksellers today. Better get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, comic creator Mark Millar made his proposal to fix the problems that have ailed the comic book industry for the last 30 years. Now, according to Mark Millar, he believes that we need to go out here and increase the royalties for comic creators by 50%, and this whole proposal, along with other proposals he has made, such as bringing in 20 legendary comic creators to try to fix the issues that ail the industry really shows his complete lack of understanding about all of the issues that have plagued the comic book industry for 30 years. However, that has not stopped many comics YouTubers from going out here and praising him for his proposal, even though his proposal makes no logical sense from a publisher's perspective. And the only reason why many of these comics YouTubers are praising Mark Millar is basically because they're, they want to go out here and clout chase and seek the validation and approval of a popular creator who has basically left the comic book industry and has gone on to Hollywood. And as these comics YouTubers go out here and look to clout chase, basically they show how little credibility they have as related to their so-called passion for fixing the comic book industry. Now, many of these individuals, I have to wonder, are they agreeing with Mark Millar because of the feasibility of his business plan, or are they looking to go out here and clout chase in an effort to get clicks and views? That's the critical question I have to ask as related to many of these comics YouTubers who seem to be extremely more disingenuous with each passing day. I mean, these comics YouTubers, they go from praising guys like Eric July because of his large subscriber base and his popularity with the far right as related to Isom and praise his book as good and not judging the book on the merits, but looking to go out here and praise the book in order to gain favor with Eric July, even though everything that Eric July has basically written has been absolute crap as related to his Isom comic book, and the entire story makes absolutely no sense at all. And the same thing goes for all of this praise of Mark Millar. Basically, Millar has a business plan that makes absolutely no logical sense from a publisher's perspective, but you have Comics YouTube going out here and praising this business plan, which isn't feasible at all if you are a publisher like myself who has to go out here and pay all of those costs. Now, Malara's plan is absolutely ridiculous when you consider it from a publisher's perspective, because from a publisher's perspective, the whole idea of going out here and giving a 50% royalty to comic book artists and writers as related to increases in sales of over 60,000 makes no logical sense because the whole margin for profit for a publisher is extremely slim. This is something I know from having to calculate the cost of printing a book minus the discounts that are given to retailers and distributors for books and out of that entire deal the math just doesn't add up to give somebody a 50 percent royalty when you have to give a 50 percent discount in order to get the book sold by retailers and distributed by distributors so you've already lost 50 percent of your costs as related to this book and compound this with the printing costs which are added to the book because you it's about 
I believe about 14 cents for the cover, which is on paperbacks, and it's another 0.8 cents per page, and that adds up to your printing cost, and this is where the percentage gets cut as related to the price, because again, you have a 50% discount, you have your printing cost, and this is deducted from the whole purchase price of the book, so if out of that deal you're not nobody's really making that much money the publisher if they are an indie publisher and it's just one person they make about a couple of dollars if they're doing print on demand but far less when they're going into retail because you have to again make your cost affordable for the customer as related to the product and this is why the price of comic books have gone up because they're not moving as many units and they haven't been moving as many units for the last i say 30 years because we started to see a decline in comics in 1994 where marvel decided to change its editorial and also at the same time bought heroes world which really did damage to the whole distribution of comics and as this marvel bought heroes world and they found out the hard way about how returnability impacted comics this basically took the industry into a decline it has not gotten out of and as the direct market has declined due to bad editorial what has happened is these comic companies have gone into a free fall because of the hiring of people like Mark Millar in management and editorial positions, people who have no real publishing experience and have no real understanding of how the publishing business works. But that doesn't stop many comics YouTubers from going out here and looking to praise a creator who created books in the past that they liked and because these individuals don't objectively see a guy like Mark Millar from a business perspective like I do, what they do is start to get spellbound and starstruck because somebody who they think was a celebrity as related to comics is saying something and what they look to do is agree with that celebrity because they want to get the favor of that individual not really thinking critically about what this person is saying or how it's going to overall impact the business the way i have to when i go out here and look to publish either one of my sjs direct fiction books like the isis series or the esteem series or some of my nonfiction books like The Man Crisis, The Woman Crisis, and Stop Simpin', or a comic book like I did with John Haynes at Death's Door. No, when I go out here, I have to crunch those numbers as related to the business, and in order for me to create product for customers, I have to go out here and crunch those numbers in the hopes that I don't take a loss, because I understand that with the 50% discounts that I have to give to retailers like Amazon, Google Play, and Smashwords, there's not that much money left. And again, this is just me, a sole independent publisher who works for himself. And if I had to hire other people, I'd have to split royalties with them as related to the business, and that would further decrease the profits. So I know from doing the math that a 50% royalty is just not possible for this business to give comic artists and comic writers, because if I give them a 50% royalty, there's no profit for the publisher minus the contract labor and the printing costs. So I know from being a person who's gone out here and did the work that the profit margin is very thin for a publisher and it doesn't start to widen out until you are selling thousands and even millions of units and even then the profit margin still is too thin to go out here and give a creator a 50% royalty. And the only reason why they're getting the 2% royalty is because that's all the publisher can afford to give with these profit margins. And again, I will repeat it once more, these profit margins are extremely thin. I mean, 
these profit margins, you have to really move units. And that's why I'm on the air all the time making videos. That's why I'm on the air all the time putting ads in front of my videos because I'm hoping that this will persuade someone to go see how professional SJS Direct is and that would motivate them to go out here and pick up one of the books on the SJS Direct imprint or one of the comics that is on SJS Direct. And as I look to expand the business, I understand that the costs are very tight and you have to be very, very careful about how you do business. And that's something Mark Millar didn't understand and Comics YouTube didn't want to understand because they wanted to be told what they wanted to hear. They want to feel good and they don't want to go out here and understand the state of the comic book business is a mess because you've got all of these inexperienced people as related to publishing coming into the business on feelings but not understanding the objective facts of the business and one of those objective facts is again publishing oftentimes is a business that is a 90 10 business in that nine out of ten books are going to fail and it is the ten percent of books that wind up paying for the 90 that fail that's a hard fact of the business that many in the comic book industry like mark millar don't understand it's those nine books that fail and the ten that pay for them i mean those ten that ten percent that one book has to pay to cover all the cost of the books that lose money and sadly in today's comic book market we have 10 out of 10 books basically failing to pull a profit i mean we have really gone from into a dark period since 1994 when marvel went extreme and tried to compete with image and dc was just continuing to try to coast until dan didio ran them into the ground in 2002 and what's happening now is that 10 out of 10 comic books fail because the 10 percent of books that were selling very well the x-men's the Spider-Mans, the Incredible Hulks, the Batmans, the Supermans, and the Flashes, those books have fallen into an abyss due to incompetent editorial, constantly changing the character stories, and even worse, rebooting the books whenever they paint themselves into a corner as related to storytelling. And that's where Mark Millar gets it all twisted, and Comics YouTube gets it twisted, they sit there and think, oh, we can bring in new old veteran creators to fix this problem when the problem really starts with editorial because editorial's job is to be the objective eye of the customer and let many of the creatives know where they're going wrong as related to story. But sadly, we don't have good editorial at the big two and because we don't have big, good editorial at the big two, what has happened is these companies have basically fallen apart and they just publish anything. And the reason why they publish anything is because their main focus is merchandising and licensing these intellectual properties. They're not really interested in going out here and actively looking to tell good stories, not understanding how the stories impact the adaptations of movies and TV, which impacts the merchandising and licensing of product. And this is all due to, again, a lack of leadership over at Marvel and DC, which has impacted the comic stores at, and led to a lot of people struggling and as related to their shops being staying open. Moreover, it has also led to a lot of creators winding up struggling financially because there is no one at the helm of these companies to actively lead these companies. And that is the main problem over at Marvel and DC. There is no publishing professional navigating and setting a course for the brands like we had in the 80s with Jeanette Kahn over at DC and Jim Shooter over at Marvel. You had individuals who were publishing professionals who understood the business, understood the percentages, understood everything, but Comics YouTube doesn't want to go that in depth. No, they go on to go out here and get clicks and views and clout chase guys like Mark Millar 
because that helps their bottom line. They can go out here and get thousands of views for a video, but they don't want to talk in depth about the business, nor do they want to talk about how the business works. No, that's something I talk about, but those videos don't really get views, just like many of the videos I do presenting positive reviews of many of the great indie creators who are putting in that work and putting in that work on some quality books. That's what I try to do, to put a spotlight on those creators instead of complaining about the SJWs, or, or as I call them, inexperienced comic pros who are in the business because they will work for cheap, thinking that this is a gateway to Hollywood when it's not a gateway to Hollywood. No, what it is is going to be a dead-end job that goes nowhere and pays low wages because the chances of you going out here and getting an actual sale are slim to none if you work in comics. Yes, guys like Mark Millar will get deals as related to adaptation and in, in, back in the day, but the whole thing is those deals are the exception, not the rule. And when it comes to comics, again, it's the bottom of the business and you either work your way up or you wind up staying in this, in this business for an extended time because the ultimate goal is to do what Mark Millar did, work your way out of comics and no veteran creator like he proposes would want to come back to those low wages. Moreover, they wouldn't want to come back for that work for hire deal where they create characters that make billions of dollars and wind up, and the company winds up making money the corporation gets rich while you sit there and are being paid per page that's not a deal that most people would go for as related to the business of of publishing because that's a bad deal for them because when you create a character like I did when I did Isis, John Haynes, Esteem, Matilda Crowley, and Lilith Graves, who are lead characters in my stories, you want to be able to be able to get compensation for your intellectual property and enjoy the wealth from that intellectual property. And you want to be able to make deals for your own property where you can go out here and maximize the money where you're getting the money for the licensing, you're getting the money for the merchandising, you're getting the money for publishing, and you're getting all the money the way J.K. Rowling gets all the money because she basically owns the rights to everything to Harry Potter. You want to get that kind of deal, and that's why people aren't coming into comics because the, de the business model is one that is a complete failure. But you won't hear that from comics, YouTube, because Comics YouTube is all about clout chasing and views. They don't want to objectively talk about the business. They don't want to talk about the things that are impeding the business, which are an archaic business model, or the whole idea of work for hire driving away people because people want to make money. No, they want to make their money from clicks and views as related to the junior high school drama, and the clout chasing basically shows how this whole environment of Comics YouTube is not about helping or improving the business. No, it's about clout chasing big time comic creators and trying to gain favor with them and in the hopes of creating a covert contract that this will lead to a door opening for them as related to raising the um, exposure of their independent comics the way Mark Millar went out here and did and went out here and gave Eric July a thumbs up as related to his Isom comic book. I mean, that's what a lot of guys try to do out here, trying to get the clicks and views. And I could have done the same thing with John Haynes at Death Store, because I got a positive review from Kevin Grievu, the creator of Blue Marvel, on John Haynes. But I really care about this business and I want to see this business really start to change 
because I know that the business is changing as related to its business model and it's changing to be creator owned material because creators don't want to go over to places like Marvel and DC because going over to Marvel and DC is not a profitable business model for those creators and I understand that those creators are going to places like Kickstarter and Indiegogo to fund their projects because it's a more profitable business for them. They keep all their rights. They keep all their intellectual property. They own everything. And that is the future of comics, which I believe will be print on demand like I'm doing with John Haynes at Death Store now. It's on Lulu for a reason because I want the customers to be able to pick up the book for a somewhat affordable price and as related to the overall cost and shipping as related to the number of units that can be produced. And I want them to be able to be able to drop ship those books without having to deal with a after a crowdfunding after a crowdfunding project so that they can come and get the books whenever they want. So I want I understand this business and I understand that this business is a very tough one, but I really am deeply disgusted by the disingenuousness and dishonesty of comics YouTube because for me, this isn't about clout chasing. This isn't about getting favor with celebrities. It's all about trying to reach the customer with product and being honest about the entire business model so that people can understand how this business works and not think that it's all about social media clicks and views because social media clicks and views don't generate word of mouth and word of mouth is the thing that generates sales and if you can't build a strong word of mouth, then you're not going to go far in this business. So I'm listening. I, I listen to a lot of these guys uh, as related to Mark Millar and his business plan, and none of them had the backbone or the stones to call him out as related to the flaws of his business plan. Outside of Peter Samedi of Alterna Comics, who crunches those numbers for costs just like I do. I mean, many people just didn't call him out about his royalty plan because. By paying creators more money doesn't increase sales, especially when your books are not distributed in major retail spaces. So the whole plan he had was flawed, but that didn't stop Comics YouTube from looking to go out here and look to praise a plan that was deeply flawed. So when I look at Comics YouTube, I mean, I'm looking at them with a side eye. And I look at them with a side eye because they're not really being honest these days. And I'm not really happy about that whole turn of ethics of Comics YouTube as related to Comicscape, as related to Eric July with Isom and Mark Millar. I mean, this is, you're saying that the social justice warriors are dishonest, they lie and they double down. But I'm seeing how many on Comics YouTube are lying and doubling down on lies. And that's not really going to help the business of selling comics long term. Now, my first full comic, John Haynes at Death's Door, is available on Lulu.com right now for you to purchase in paperback. And you can get your own copy by clicking the link in the description box. And my second comic, Esteem, No Good Deed, is available for on Kindle for 99 cents. And it's also available in the back of the Esteem series book, Esteem Blast from the Past. And I'm still looking to produce more independent comics, but I need your help to do it. I have a script for an ISIS comic book which will feature the goddess next door. And I'm still trying to raise funds to get that comic produced. And I can only produce that comic with your help. And if you guys could drop a donation, that would be greatly appreciated. Moreover, I also go out here and buy lots of great independent comics from independent creators and I review them on the channel, something many people in comics YouTube don't do. And in order for me to go out here and buy those comics, I need your help because your donations are what I use to buy those independent comics by putting pledges on Kickstarters and Indiegogos of great books. So every donation that you give me is either used to create comics put covers on SJS Direct Books and be able to help other independent creators. So every dollar you donate to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App is used towards helping those in the comic book business. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.
now available on Lulu. John Haynes at Death's Door, the man who rules the world, takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the first John Haynes comic at Lulu.com today. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.